Hey everyone, MTAST here, and if you guys have been watching my channel, you might have seen that I did official showcases for all of the different classes in Outriders. So honestly, I would recommend you watch those videos so you can understand what all the classes do, what their skills are, what some legendary gear will look like, and get a decent understanding of what you're getting yourself into. Now, in this video, I don't want to flat out say, play the Devastator or play the Trickster because that's super opinionated and I want you to make the decision for yourself. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over each class, I'm going to show off some skills, I'm going to talk about them, I'm going to talk about the strengths, I'm going to talk about the weaknesses, and my overall thoughts on the class. And then hopefully, by the end of this video, you can make a decision for yourself. If you're wondering what class I'm deciding, I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video and why I chose that particular class, but I want to make sure we go over all of this stuff first before I give you my opinion, because I really don't want to sway you before you've seen all of the information. So, without any further ado, let's jump in looking at the Devastator first. Alright, so I'm going to be straight up with the Devastator. I think that this class has some of the best skills in the game if you look at overall value. It has huge shields to absorb bullets, it's got great area of effect, it's got mobility, it's even got some support skills. I think that the class overall is, it's kind of stacked. It doesn't mean that the other classes aren't. But I never felt weak on this class. I never felt like I had bad abilities. The legendary gear is gross. Absolutely gross. And I understand that this might be baiting you into playing Devastator. But I don't think that would be a bad choice. If the Devastator wasn't on your radar, I am going to recommend you give it a try at some point because I think it can do things that many of the other classes cannot. It has some amazing support value if you are playing in a team. And if you want to just run and gun solo, it's probably one of the safer classes out there overall. I would place it near the top, uh, with something like the Pyromancer being probably the weakest. But that doesn't mean the Pyromancer's bad. We'll get into that later. Uh, but the Devastator really does bring a lot to the table, and I would be surprised if this didn't become one of the most popular classes. After playing all four, there's just so much going on here that I, I feel like when people start making videos and showing off the Devastator, it's going to get... Um, it's going to get a lot of playtime. Now, alongside all the skills and everything, I want to talk about one thing that I think is important. The melee has a node where you can get double damage on the Devastator, and this is insane because you do melee a lot in this game, and being able to run in, slam, and one-bang enemies is super valuable. Check out the Devastator. Uh, I would definitely recommend it, but let's jump on with the Pyromancer. I feel like the Pyromancer didn't get the best showcase in the demo because some of the best skills just weren't available. And uh, the further you get into this class, the better it gets, in my opinion. When you start unlocking things in the skill tree, it gets even better. And I honestly do feel like this is almost like an AD carry in League of Legends. If you've never played that game, it does require you to start getting some gear to be valuable to your team. It does require you to level up to start getting that value, that bang for your buck. And I think that the Pyromancer, no pun intended, is a bit of a slow burn. It is a good class, it's a decent class from the start, but one of the issues is healing. To heal on this class, enemies have to be affected by your abilities. And when you don't have multiple charges of your abilities, right, and you don't have reduced cooldowns on your abilities, it's harder to heal on this class than some of the others. And so it just flat out is more difficult in some situations. Now, that being said, I hope I didn't scare you because this class, as you progress into the end game, is going to be nuts. You can set entire rooms on fire with the click of a button. Uh, you can stun entire groups of enemies. It does have some amazing potential. Whether you're solo or in a group, I think that this class is going to be nuts. It just takes a little bit of time to get there. And I think that's the beauty of a, you know, looter shooter type game like this is getting that build perfected and finally getting to the point where you dominate everything. And I'm telling you, the Pyromancer is going to dominate everything. Highly recommend this class. All right, now let's talk about the Trickster. The Trickster is flashy. If you want to be an assassin jumping around the field, you can do that. If you want to play Whirlwind Barbarian, you can do that. Uh, if you want to be a marksman, you can do that. There's a lot of things going for this class, and I think that it is going to be one of the most popular in the game. Is it going to be OP and better than everything else? I don't think so. I really don't think so. This Whirlwind can be a little bit annoying at times, uh, but overall it is super, super strong, and if you build for anomaly damage and skill leech, you feel indestructible. 
I think that the fun factor here is one of the main reasons why it's going to be popular. It's not necessarily that it's OP and broken because I can do things on the Pyromancer that I think are incredible that no one else can do. And I think that the Devastator is a rounded, well-balanced, incredible class that I don't think is, is worse than the Trickster. I think that the Trickster just has that special sauce that has people really excited, and I do not blame them. But I think that the legendary gear that I saw on this, very, very good. The skills overall, very good. Very few weak skills. I like the Trickster a lot, and I think that they're viable from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. The only thing I have, you know, a little bit of worry is if enemies don't clump up enough, there are times when some of the abilities don't feel like they've got as much area of effect as some of the other ones. Now, single target, I think you do some pretty good damage, and I think that the fun factor here trumps all, but there are some situations where I felt like, you know what, I wish I was on the Devastator, or I was on the Pyromancer over the Trickster. But then you do this, and uh, it's hard to, <laughs> it's, it's hard not to fall in love, baby, right? Okay, now let's move on to the Technomancer. Now, the Technomancer, again, I feel like people didn't get to see all of the cool skills, right? They only got a taste of what this class can do, and uh, one of the best abilities in the game was not available with the Cold Snap. The Cold Snap ability is a huge area of effect freeze, and it is a game changer in this game. I'm telling you, it is insane. And then when you start getting multiple turrets, this class really takes off. Now, if you like to snipe, I would say that that is one of the strengths of this class. You get some amazing multipliers for sniping, but you can use any sort of weapon in the game. It's not that big of a deal. The biggest strength here isn't even the sniping. It's, uh, it's honestly like the CC. It's the crowd control, being able to poison, being able to freeze. You can stop enemies in their tracks, and you also get a bunch of skill leech as well as weapon leech built into your kit. Just doing damage heals you, and so it's relatively safe overall. I think that this is one of the safest classes when you start getting some of those, uh, those abilities going, um, but I would say that there are times where because you're re you know, relying on gadgets and you're relying on the targeting of your turrets, it can be frustrating if they're not hitting a target and freezing them when you want, and there is a little bit of, not, not RNG, but a little bit of randomness, I suppose, in just like which enemies get targeted and when they get shot, and there's some bullet bloom on the, the turrets, and it is frustrating. I'm not gonna lie to you, Technomancer was my least favorite. So that is a bias of mine, but I see some major potential here. It has some things that it can do that other classes cannot. I think that the gadgets allow you to play uh, back and support your team. And with the freezes, I think that the freeze is the best uh, crowd control in the game. And so the fact that you have so many tools to freeze enemies, I think is one of the biggest strengths here. The fact that you can stop an enemy from doing anything, from attacking your team, they're just a sitting duck, that brings value and so even if I might not play the Technomancer, I hope that if I'm doing the endgame expeditions, that I've got a Technomancer on my team supporting me, if, if that makes sense. All right. Now, I think that every class has value. I think every class is relatively balanced. I think they're all really good, but I think that there are a couple that do stand out, and number one is the Devastator. I think that the Devastator is number one or number two overall. If you look at the area of effect, if you look at the tankiness, if you look at the healing capabilities, if you look at the melee... I think that this class is so good overall, and I really want to play it at launch, but I am still almost undecided. I might flip a coin in the morning. Devastator and Trickster are the two that I want to play. Uh, I think that the Trickster is great because you get shields, you can dive in, it's amazing, but I think that the Devastator class is winning in my books uh, because it brings a lot to the table. It has just so much going for it that it almost feels like it could do no wrong, and that's kind of one of the reasons I want to play it but it's not quite as flashy as the Trickster. The Trickster has a fun factor to it that is just, in my opinion, is unmatched. Teleporting around, slicing and dicing, it just sounds good. Like, some of the abilities just sound cool. They look cool, and I really, really like this class. And uh, I want to do some build guides on it because I think it is going to be popular, so I think I'm going to go with this one, even though I think Devastator might actually be better. Uh, I think if I had to gamble on it, I would say that the Devastator is going to be the better class in, in a lot of content just because it's it, it's stacked. I, I, I truly think it's stacked. But I haven't seen every single Legendary, and maybe that sways things. 
I think that the Pyromancer is amazing. I think the Technomancer can do some great stuff. But right now, I am leaning towards Technomancer, or sorry, uh, Trickster first, and then I'll probably follow up with the Devastator, then Pyromancer, and then the final one will be the Technomancer. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be doing a bunch of Outriders content, and I'm probably streaming this game right now. Twitch.tv slash mtashed. Make sure to check that out if you haven't, and I will see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.